Hey everyone, it's good to see you again. Welcome back to John's World Adventures. It's now time to take our adventure to Cambodia. Remember, I still don't have my ATM card, but we're moving forward. So let's go take a look. So as you can see, here is Southeast Asia, over here is Thailand, up here is Laos, and this is where I went down through Laos, and I'm down here now. There, look, there's the Garden of Nang, do you remember? So, after you go down to Dondet, you'll have to cross the border down here. This was my first meal in Cambodia, some dry old pork over rice. We didn't start off on the right foot. Nevertheless, the bus will take you to Siem Reap, regardless of your first meal, and there you will be able to see the temple. Now, this beautiful hostel, called Hideout Hostel, was only $3 a night. What? I know, that seems crazy. Although they make a lot of their money selling alcohol. There are quieter hostels as well in Siem Reap, but actually this place is a super party city. It's crazy, you would not expect it having the sacred temple of Angkor Wat close by. Now Angkor Wat is truly enormous. It's the largest religious monument in the world, over 400 acres. You're going to need a tuk-tuk, which if you split it with someone is pretty cheap. It's 20 bucks from sunrise to sunset, and he'll come pick you up from the hostel early in the morning, 4 a.m., and you can go see the sunrise over Angkor Wat. The pictures don't do it justice, you just have to be there. The word Angkor Wat actually stands for City of Temples. And as you'll see later on, there are multiple complexes and sites of multiple temples that we'll see. It took five million tons of sandstone to build this place over probably a 30 year period. And it was largely unknown about in the world for 500 years. If you want more information than that, you'll have to go watch a documentary. Now, Bayan Temple is one of the craziest places I've ever been in my entire life. There's just something really weird about seeing these stone faces. Out of all the temples in Angkor Wat, this was by far my favorite one. Now, as you look to your right and your left, you can see a lot of statues without their heads. We have this connotation in the West that the Abrahamic religions are barbaric and brutal and war-mongering religions, and that Buddhism and Hinduism are gentle and kind. But in actuality, Hindus and Buddhists fought over this land for generations. When one party retook this land, they would decapitate the statues of the previous religion. look familiar? It should! This is where Laura Croft and Tomb Raider was filmed, and why Angelina Jolie adopted a Cambodian girl. Being largely abandoned for 500 years, it gave nature lots of time and undisturbed effort to grow over everything, and it's quite something to see. Here is Sebastian, who is 6'4", to show the scale. Outside of Siem Reap, Cambodia is extremely poor. I recommend getting out and seeing it a bit, as, he, as we did here in this tuk-tuk. And that's about it for CM Reap. Ah, uh, yes. Phnom Penh. A city where truly anything goes. This was a sight to behold for sure. I was extremely concerned for this man's life, but he seemed not to be. He and Sebastian enjoyed waving to him as he beeped his horn at us. Even standards of safety can be cultural. 
I decided to go a bit luxurious for $30 a night at this beautiful hotel. Can you take a guess at what river this is? If you guess the Mekong River, you are correct. A more sobering place to visit in this city is this prison, remnants of the terrible civil war that occurred in Cambodia with the rise of communism. This schoolhouse turned prison was a place of torture where many people came to be tortured and killed as suspected informants against the rising powers. All these people pictured died at this prison. They were kept in terrible conditions where these holes were put in the walls so that they could see the whole way down. All of this was executed under Pol Pot and most people didn't even know who he was at the time. With about a 45 minute drive out of the city, you can go to the killing fields. These are all real skulls of people who were killed out here. Not even babies were spared as they were smashed against this tree. Truly a dark time in Cambodian history where over one fourth of the population, those with soft hands, were killed. To lighten the mood a bit, me and Sebastian went shooting afterwards. They had a host of World War II weapons, including a rocket launcher, for $300. This one was the KAR-98, an incredibly loud gun that short-circuited our phone's sound system. After I had asked to shoot a clean target, I thought me and Sebastian were going to be rocket launcher target practice. This guy was angry. Nevertheless, I stood my ground, and my will prevailed over his. The Cambodian National Museum is definitely worth a stop to see the brighter side of Cambodian culture. The architecture and the artwork and a lot of ancient relics are here. Here is an ancient Sanskrit tablet with a bullet hole in it from the war. Hello, and there's me and the Cambodian Big Bird. Who knew? After a delicious Indian meal, I finally received my debit card! Woo! It was a joyous time. A fellow traveler from Siem Reap brought it to me. A shout out and a thank you to Amy. Sadly, the time for me and Sebastian to depart had come. He had to go meet his girlfriend in Thailand. Woo! <laughs> As I mourned my loss of Sebastian, I could think of no better place than Koh Rong Salon, an island in the bottom part of Cambodia. This hostel had an incredible view. Koh Rong Salon is not very much inhabited, so get there while you can before it becomes a tourist destination. Actually, for the first time, I saw bioluminescent plankton in Koh Rong Salon. It wasn't this bright, but it was bright enough to see. I had never seen a wall gecko this big. It was about as big as my face. It was terrifying. Lots of firsts in Koh Rong Salon, as this was the first time I had ever seen a house of cards completed. Great job, Hannah! A big storm was coming, so it was time to head out and get ready to leave Cambodia. Bye-bye, Koh Rong Salon. Last stop in Cambodia was Kampot. Once again, another beautiful hostel to stay in for just a few bucks. I stayed in the back corner container back there. Kampot is known for its pepper fields. So that's where I went to check out some authentic pepper. <laughs> These ladies work tirelessly, hand-picking the pepper off of the plants and off of each other so that they are individualized. Wow. I even found a mini pineapple. Now, when you're traveling, you win some and you lose some. Unfortunately, the amazing Bokor National Park in Cambodia was a loss for me. 
After about an hour long drive to the top, as you saw, there was a heavy mist and rainfall. It was also really cold because it was high on the mountain. After exploring a few abandoned buildings, we decided to head back because a storm was coming. While driving, it started to pour and it was cold. My shirt was gathering the rainfall and making it even colder, so I took off my shirt and drove the whole way back shirtless in cold rain. It sucked. I headed back to Phnom Penh to catch a ride to the airport. As I contemplated what would happen if that gentleman fell off into the street and our tuk-tuk hit him and did a nasty crash, killing all three of us, I realized one thing. Cambodia wasn't so bad after all. I enjoyed my time here, and I'll remember it forever. And I recommend it to all of you as well. Well, that's all for Cambodia, people. Next stop would normally have been Vietnam, which is right next to Cambodia. But my friend from the Marshall Islands, Jem Anthony Villaflor, is in the Philippines, so I decided to get a flight and go and see him. Make sure that you like and subscribe below if you enjoyed the video, and join me next time for an exploration through the Philippines. Bye bye! <laughs>